Welcome back everybody. It is that time again when we gather around the goat man and tell ghost stories. And um, yeah, hopefully we have a good turnout tonight. You guys, uh, tap the screen, send some likes, interact, leave a comment, share, whatever you got to do. Get the stream boosted a little bit, get it out there so that we get some people. Um, thank you, thank you guys for the hearts, appreciate it. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Hey. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I was waiting for the little notification that you went live, mm -hmm. and I think I started falling asleep on the couch, but, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully um, hopefully, lots of people are here tonight. TikTok seems a little slow tonight, though, so I'm a little bit worried that we may not have a turnout, but yeah. uh, guest box is open, so if anybody wants to come up and talk about any of these topics listed above feel free to jump in the s box well chris have you seen anything spooky this weekend uh just my, my own reflection <laughs> i'm sorry no i haven't um <laughs> <laughs> no <Same>. i haven't <laughs> I, you know what i've been watching the office so um i should have been you know, looking for some cool paranormal stuff, but uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> How about you guys down in the chat? Has anybody had any paranormal experiences this weekend? I wanted to have one somewhere, but I didn't know where to go <laughs> to find one. So um, I just had to settle with a boring weekend at home. Oh, oh my. Let me turn my volume off real quick. There we go. Uh, you're a psychic medium. Oh, Sheena, come up in the guest box and talk to us. You sound very mm. interesting. <laughs> Ashley works on cold cases. Yeah, very interesting. Awesome. We've always wanted to get a psychic on. I love talking to psychics. Very interesting topic. That's technically kind of our first, I think. Hi. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome. Welcome. I'm pretty new to TikTok. I think I've been on here maybe two months. So not used to it. So I'm kind of getting used to the whole <laughs> tick. I'm very old school. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's a lot to get used yes, to, actually. <laughs> yes. My uh, daughter put me on it. And I'm like, I'm so old school. Like I do basically Facebook. Um, but I've been doing it 25 years now. I work with the police department all over Texas, Philadelphia, New York, um, cold cases and missing persons. I um, have did paranormal. I've worked with Patty Negri and Ghost Adventures. I've, I've did a lot. So I love for a paranormal and so forth. Um, yeah. I do animal communication, past life regressions, you name it, I've did it. I don't use tarot cards. I don't care for them. I don't use any type of tool. I just do all, all of my work is done telepathically and um, mm -hmm. through automatic writing. So oh, that's how yeah, I work my cases. Cool. Yeah. I just, I don't like it, you know, to teach his own. I just, I don't like any instruments used. Um, yeah. But I do, oh gosh, I don't know. I can go on and on. I've been doing <laughs> um, but that's how I work my cases and have did a lot of um, cases in homes, um, even in churches. I've did them all over. So. Yeah, it's interesting that you mention uh, tarot cards. I really like tarot cards, but I'll tell you what I use them for is just to connect to my own subconscious mind. You yes. Know? Yeah. No, I uh, totally, I totally get that. I, you know, I get nervous, I guess, with some people because, you know, we did with certain like tarot cards, Luigi board, all that stuff is opening a door. And I feel like a lot of people don't know how to close it. So I think that's what makes me so nervous in those type of situations is because of that. So I'm like really cautious. 
about that. <laughs> the minute I hear, oh, please don't use that. I'm running. I, I'm like, my eyes are like eight balls and I'm running. Cause I'm thinking, oh yeah. boy, you know, but you know, I enjoy what I do. I love so helping. how did, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm sure that that's like a huge responsibility too. So how did you figure out that you had the ability to do what you do? Like, was it something that you've had since you were a kid? Or? Yeah, I, um, I'm not going to say I fully knew, but at the age of five, I remember feeling things on a deeper level, which is more of an empathic feeling. As I got older, I would start seeing things. So it would be, most of the time, it would be shadows, one of the people apparitions. But as I got older, it turned into seeing them in full form. Um, so, and then I had a near-death experience at... 27, I had open heart surgery and that even enhanced it even more. So, I mean, there's been so many different situations and scenarios. Um, I wouldn't say that I always knew, knew, you know, younger. I'm not going to say I knew, you know, knew exactly what was going on at the age of six because I, nobody does. And if they say they do, they're very incorrect. But I knew that, you know, I would see things, feel things, energy, people would walk back connected positive so I knew something was different um so that's pretty much how I I found out um or I could feel you know when somebody was going to pass away I would see a car crash and that was my sign for someone that was going to pass away um mm -hmm. so there was different things that led up to realizing what I could do in my abilities but I never took classes I didn't do any of that you know, a lot of people do, you know, I have not, nothing against that. I just have never had to do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the longer you do it, the longer you're more enhanced, you know, and, and you learn. And that's what I did. So just out of curiosity, if you don't mind me picking your brain a little, um, <laughs> um, how does it how does it come to you is it like because i i had an experience one time uh he said he used to do like a radio show like a paranormal talk show um on a like an indie channel or whatever and we had this amazing psychic medium who would come on sometimes and um and she would tell us stories about how you know it kind of started for her and stuff like that and, and she had experiences with communicating with apparitions. So did you ever have anything like that? Or like, how does it come to you? Everything comes telepathically to me. <clears throat> so through my third eye, that's how I communicate. Um, so that's how I've always pretty much did it. Um, I would see the apparition, apparition, make a talk stream, getting tired, the apparition, and then I would start hearing them. And I would hear them in my ears, and then I would see very fast pictures. And then everything would come together. So it's like I'm almost, I'm working obviously with when I do readings with the spirit as well as all of my psychic abilities. So I'm seeing it almost enhanced. So I'm hearing the voice, but then I'm seeing the picture. So it's like double coming at me. I mean, I think that was kind of the most difficult. So I do readings too. I say it's like puzzle pieces that you have to put together because I'm getting a lot at once. So, um, I also do with my cases, I do remote viewing. So, you know, I'm at, obviously when I work, I just worked on a case in 1974 homicide, Holly Moonstar in Pittsburgh, PA recently. And, uh, obviously I can't be in Pittsburgh. I'm, uh, five hours from there. So I get on the phone with the detective and what I do is I just hone in, I start my automatic writing and then I start doing remote viewing of the location. And I'm seeing everything. And I can even go to the time. So that's how I, I do it. Um, and everybody's different with their abilities and, and they do it a different way. So, but that's pretty much how I work um, on a telepathic level. And I pick up on health as too. I can scan the body and I pick up on any health issues that is going on with the person. So it's quite a multitude going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it something that like uh, kind of also 
is maybe like a little bit of a burden. Like when you're around a group of people, do you pick up stray oh, information? Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> that would be stressful to me. <laughs> it took me a long time to be able to shut it off completely where I ground before I, I do readings. But to be able to turn it all off, you'll, you'll never be able to fully turn it off because no matter what, you're, you get very into, in tune immediately when I walk into a room. I could look at somebody and be like, do, 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 this happened, this happened, this happened. But then it's like, okay, calm down. You have to center yourself and ground it. But I've learned mm -hmm. that it's not as intense as when I was younger, thank goodness. Or my, I'd be climbing the walls like a monkey. So <laughs> I've learned to kind of ground myself so I'm not, you know, because you don't want that because I can cause health problems, you know, between cardiovascular, everything. It affects everything. But I always say it's a gift, but a curse to feel things and be able to see things because there's a good and there's a bad with that, like a yin and a yang. So that's how I feel about it. I love what I do. It's been a long time. <laughs> I yeah. have clients that are like, are you yeah, ever going to retire? I'm so. 40 years old now. I've been doing readings since I was 12 and cold cases since I was 15. So a long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I don't do them on TikTok. You know what I mean? I just, that just isn't my thing. You know, I see a lot of people and I'm like, oh gosh, this is baloney, baloney, and I can't do this. You know, as I'm scrolling through and I'm watching and I'm like, yes or no questions and this. And I thought, oh my, and people are paying for it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That drives me nuts. I am serious. I'm like, yeah. I can't even go there, you know, but it is what it is. But I just would never do that. I do Facebook Live where I teach about angels. I teach about archangels. I teach about grounding um, chakras. Um, so mine are more like educational on my lives versus here where you're just picking up a thousand energies. And I, I don't tend, I don't like the relationship readings. I will not even touch on those. No, thank you. I think people know when they're supposed to get a relationship with Tommy, that's that, that, you know what I mean, but you keep repetitively going back. So that to me is like beating a dead horse. I'm not touching it, but um, yeah. stuff like that. I just, I can't do it. My main thing I love is mediumship. And, and that's what I always focus on for the most part. really cool well i won't ask you a million You're questions a i definitely I'm could right but, uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um if you had to pick one case that you've worked on that was like you know the most profound or the scariest or, or just the one that comes to mind first what would that case be can you well, talk I about anything like that or? after right now um such kind of watch guys. there is a case right now going on in built in philadelphia and um, unfortunately with this case, there's a lot of crooked stuff going on. Um, you're dealing with government, um, government officials, you're dealing with um, police officers corrupt, you're dealing with a corrupt medical examiner. You know, it, it, that to me, being in that situation and being picked for that type of case, I have to watch everything. And to me, that can be very, very scary and fearful um because you don't want your name to ever get out with those type of cases but i i don't really have a, this one recently has kind of had me walking on shards of glass almost on kind of a nervous level because you are dealing with high-end officials in government so you know that's about the only one um, now, I haven't taken certain cases um, that I've been giving recently, and I, I kind of pick and choose at this point, um, but I had one case that I didn't take, and it was in Pittsburgh, <clears throat> and um, there was a bunch of abuse and so forth, and, and the children were murdered, and I said, I can't take that case. I, I, I just, that's tough. I mean, they're all tough. But with certain things, I guess, with me, it's like, no way. I couldn't imagine. I, I couldn't imagine any of the cases. But with children, I have trouble with that. So I want to say, like I said, the most recent one has been the hardest. And mm -hmm. one thing with children also. 
Yeah, somebody in the comments was asking, how do you protect yourself in that situation? Well, <clears throat> number one, I, I work okay, thank you. And on a private level, I work with detectives. So they're aware of me being involved. Um, you know, I, I like I said, I don't, I'm very cautious with cases where I don't want to be known. And I'll make sure <clears throat> that I'm not, now how I protect myself spiritually, I ground a lot, I meditate, um, I, you know, pray, and that's the best protection, you know, for me. And that's how I've gotten by, you know, through all of the situations and cases that I've worked. I'm not even paying attention to the comments. I don't even see them. I'm just talking. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. Um, grounding to me is big and, yeah. and prayer and also cleansing. I cleanse my house, sage. I use, um, polysantos. I use black, uh, white Vespa powder. I use black salts. I do a lot. So spiritually, yeah, very, very protected. Um, so that's pretty much how I, if I answer the question right, protect myself. Yeah. Well, that, very interesting. We've always wanted to get a psychic to come up, a uh, psychic medium or someone with, you know, uh, some type of abilities. And <laughs> so you're our first, so we're pretty oh, excited good. to have you up here. Uh, but we really appreciate you coming up. I'm going to send you a follow here yeah, definitely. and uh hopefully uh like if you want to hang around a little bit i don't know if you've ever been here before but we usually just tell some ghost stories and hang out so feel free to awesome. yeah, thank you yeah. thank you for having me i'm available most of the time um, yeah absolutely thank you for coming up yes thank you i appreciate it yeah have a good, good night. night you too bye Oh, I see, I see Cat Mama. I see Tully. I see everybody. Hey guys, how's it going? That was interesting. Um, we've always wanted to get, uh, it, but I feel bad. I feel like I have too many questions. I don't want to just bombard somebody with questions, you know, like it feels, that feels, uh, aggressive. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Couple questions about you know like um so I'm a new Wiccan and my mom she's like as what you call as a she's a like a um she's also a psychic but my friend Nick he has like these uh he's a warlock and I've been trying to figure out how to you know like you know connect to nature more so i could like you know be co more connected to it um i mean if you're asking me i'm probably not the best person to ask because i'm an atheist oh. <laughs> i love which uh, the cult uh, oh, i love all too. of that stuff but i don't particularly hold any certain beliefs about it um but we do have some people in the comments surely who can answer questions like that um, but I'll tell you another thing too, though. I read a lot. I read a lot of witchcraft books, a lot of occult books. Um, I read anything from like, I've usually got my, this book laying here on the desk at all times. This, I don't know if you can see it, if it'll, it'll probably cut out. I, I like to read a lot of um, esoteric occult books. So stuff like that could probably help. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's a lot of witches here on TikTok. The presence and they always have answers. But, uh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, guys. Um, Chris, you're being so quiet. You didn't. Did you have any <laughs> answers for how to 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 be more witchy? <laughs> I don't. Somebody somebody suggests that they walk barefoot on grass and meditate in nature. So that sounds good. Yeah, everybody yeah. should do that regardless of what you believe. Right. Yeah. Um, unless they're in which case, maybe don't. 
But um, yeah. All right, guys, guest box is open. Everybody tap the screen, send some hearts, get some people in here. More people means more ghost stories. And more ghost stories makes us all happy. And we want to get scared before bedtime, right? Like, that's the best way to go to bed late at night is terrified from other people's ghost stories. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I should have a script. I need somebody to write me a script so that I'm not just winging it all the time because it's just going to get progressively weirder. I'm just going to say the weirdest stuff. <laughs> it's part of the fun. I know, right? Um, is it going to be stories? a psychic yes. night? I hope it's a psychic night. That would be amazing. Did you ever notice, like, we get into pockets where we'll have, like, nothing but hat man, nothing but psychics, nothing, well, not, not psychics. This is kind of our first psychic night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing but like alien abductions, you know what I mean? So yeah. maybe maybe it's happening with psychics tonight. That would be super cool. Um, maybe uh, yeah, maybe we get some more people to come up. I always want like I, I it kills me. I have to resist the urge to be like, tell me what you see about me. Like there's something weird. Tell me, tell me how you perceive me. Um, because I just feel like there's a lot of paranormal crap goes on around me. So. I always want to ask that question, but I never ask that question. Monica is also a psychic medium. Very cool. Yeah, we've got a lot in here tonight. If anybody wants to come up and, um, you know, talk about psychic medium stuff, we could definitely do that too. Uh, in the meantime, if anybody has a paranormal story, an extraterrestrial story, a story about Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, preferably the Loch Ness, uh, glitch in the matrix feel free to hop in the guest box come up and share your story it also doesn't have to be paranormal it can be something that's just super weird um but but we really love bigfoot stories those are a favorite here so yeah <laughs> i bet you twenty dollars will never get a long story i'm gonna keep saying it until <laughs> tiktok directs us into that algorithm and surely someone will tell us about their Loch Ness Monster sighting. Have we had any, we've had <laughs> lake monster stories, haven't we? Have we? I don't remember that. I feel like maybe, I don't know. Lake monster. I don't remember. All right. Cat <laughs> Mama's going to come up. She's going to come up and tell us something here in a second. Um, let's see, lake monsters. Anybody lives near the Ohio River ought to have at least one lake monster story. Uh, <laughs> that water is toxic. <laughs> yeah. Everything uh, that lives in the Ohio River is a lake monster. <laughs> Cat Mama's going to come up here and tell us more of her uh, Mandela stories. <laughs> story about. <laughs> Oh, sleep paralysis. Very interesting. We get a lot of sleep paralysis, too. Oh, yeah. Tully's drinking water. <laughs> Cecil says that's Tully's drinking water. <laughs> you know, I've seen people eat fish that they caught out of the Ohio, so <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> It's so warm and it smells funny. And there's like, there's like, uh, I don't know if I should say this on TikTok. There's uh, boom things right down the river. So it's like mixing in, making the water green and like radioactive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why you're not supposed to eat the fish. Um, why are you targeting me? <laughs> We're just talking about the Ohio River and how fresh and clean it is. Um, hello there, Tina. All right, somebody hop in the box. I don't, uh, Cat Mama's coming, but it's going to take her a minute. She's a little busy at the moment, but she's coming. But in the meantime, if anybody wants to come up. One time something mimicked my buddy, he tried to lure me off the trail while I was walking home from work. Oh, that's so interesting because, um, did I post a video coming no, it's already posted. Did I post it? Oh my God, I can't remember which videos I have and haven't posted yet. <laughs> I have a story um, about a cryptid creature that does that very thing. 
So that's kind of interesting that you mentioned that. Hey, cat mama. Hi. Can you? Hey. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I uh, I don't have any more. more Mandela effect stories, even though I could <laughs> about that, but I actually have um, a story from a family member of mine. It's my, it's my nephew's wife, and it involved my great niece. But before I tell that story, um, for some Sarah, for some reason, I didn't know why TikTok wasn't showing me notifications of you being live and it was like the uh -huh. last couple of weeks and i'm like why is she not on and like apparently i didn't know you had to click that little bell so that you get all the notifications so everyone just make yeah. sure that you click the bell and sit to all because i was only getting bits and pieces but um uh also sarah you had said that you are an atheist and so am i and that's why like i'm shocked that i have so many paranormal experiences i didn't grow up in religion and mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of glad my parents didn't force it down my throat but yeah me too i uh i didn't that's another question like i was wondering like does spirituality like religious spirituality have to do anything with regular spirituality and apparently not because if i didn't grow up in religion and I'm having all these experiences, you know, but, um, also, um, the last time I saw one of your lives, um, we were trying to get like the people to come up and tell their stories and people, some people were a little shy about it. And, um, I just wanted to say to everyone that this is a safe space. No one's going to make fun of you more than likely. We're going to believe you this platform, Sarah's platform. You can tell your stories and and don't feel afraid to tell your stories. That's why I love this 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 page. But um, I appreciate that. So I'm gonna also tell you another story of of mine, and it kind of ties in to this. So I'll tell my story and then I'll tell my 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 nephew's um wife's story. So. My dad passed away in 2006, and I had a premonition of his death. Now, unfortunately, he was taken away from me at the hands of another family member. And that night that it happened, um, I was heading home from work. And I'm on the highway driving, and it flashed in my head. Now this is something I've don't I've never really told anyone, but um, his death flashed in my head. I saw it in my head, and I remember I was on the highway driving him, and I just blurted out, "That would never happen." And when I got home, I discovered it did happen. So, fast forward years later, uh, my nephew gets married. He has a daughter. Uh, my my great niece is eight years old. This happened when she was about four years old. Um, me and his wife follow each other on social media. That's how we keep in contact. So my father was a firefighter and um, his death really affected the family because, again, he was taken away from us. And um, my nephew had taken one of his badges and he had it up on my great niece's wall so one night um my my nephew wasn't home it was his wife and his daughter home and uh his wife told me that she heard my great niece talking to somebody so she went to her room and she's like cat who are you talking to and my great niece says my grandpa who worked at the firehouse because um, cause she, before, before she asked hey, my, um, my nephew's wife had videotaped her. She was standing on her bed and she was looking up at that badge and she's like, I'll leave the light on for you. She's like, I love you. You can come visit. Right. And 
she had asked her daughter, who are you talking to? And my great niece said, my grandpa, who worked at the firehouse. So she was like shocked. So when my nephew came home, she said that she asked my nephew, did you tell Kat about your grandfather? And, and he's like, no, I never told her about him. So that's a hundred percent. I know that was my dad talking to my to my great niece. I know it, because you know kids are more open to paranormal because they're not cynical adults like we are, you know. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share that real quick. Um, she sent me the video and I was literally in tears because I knew it was him. I knew it was him talking to her, to her, and then. It was just amazing. So that's all I wanted to share. I'll be in the chat and and everyone come up, tell your stories. And all right, have a good night, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny how that happens. My nephew actually did that one time. Um, my mom used to babysit my nephew. Uh, my sister worked like night shift, like a, a weird shift, and her husband worked a weird shift. And so my nephew was a lot. And uh, I was, how much older am I? I think I'm like five years older than him. He was probably three or four by this point. We went out to one of the neighbor's houses. And he's, you know, not like, I don't know that much about kids. He's not too far past toddler age, but he talks and stuff and does, you know, kid things. And uh, he wandered into this old lady's house and he's just talking up a storm to somebody. And um, my mom stepped around the door and she's like, Matthew, who are you talking to? And he's like, Papa, Papa. And he's like pointing at nothing. There's nobody in there. But just a few months before that, the old man that lived there had passed away. And uh, that was very, like, in the moment. <laughs> Chris, you ever had anything like that happen? It's crazy what it does. Um, well, I, uh, I told you that story of when I was babysitting my friend's daughter. I don't know if you remember that. That's kind of similar, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess I will bring up the next one. I'm having an allergy attack. Whew. Hello and welcome. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good, how are you? Pretty good. I have a UFO ship story. Awesome. So it, this was back in uh, the mid-90s. I was in college. And, um, I live uh, in, Nor in uh, a town in Idaho called Moscow. And we were going to a place called Jerry Johnson Hot Springs. Now, Jerry Johnson is about halfway between here and Missoula, Montana. And it's literally in the, in the middle of the woods. And we'd, we'd uh, trekked in at night. You're not supposed to camp there, but we wanted to camp. So we trekked in after dark. And when we were, when we got there, everybody set up camp and then we were all sitting in the hot springs and everybody else was drinking and they were drinking Jack Daniels. I can't stand that crap. So I wasn't drinking and, you know, looking up at the stars, they're just everywhere. And I noticed one star started to squiggle. That's the only way I can explain it. It started squiggling in, you know, started squiggling around and then it would zoom, go over here and then zoom, go over there. And it, between the stars, it's like light years away. And there's no way, there's no way it couldn't be anything but some sort of ship. I mean, that's the only explanation I, I could have made. And what's funny is that on the way up there, we were traveling in two, a two car caravan and the car that was following us lost track of us. So we were separated and they were, they were camping out in a different spot altogether. And one of the people in that party saw the same thing. 
And nobody believed me. They're like, oh, you're full of crap, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's drunk, so they're just not taking anything seriously. But the fact that uh, my other friend who wasn't even with us saw the same thing, it was just validation. And I, yeah, I believe they're star people. How could there not be? Yeah, that's my story. So thanks for letting me share. Yeah, thank you for coming up. That's pretty interesting. Um, you know, I never, in all the time I was in Idaho, I never got to see any UFOs or anything, but it was pretty busy a lot. So I guess maybe that's why I didn't, I didn't get a lot of time to stargaze and look for stuff. But uh, I saw that cat mama said, Chris, that she's going to bring, she's going to bring the Mandela effect heat next time. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> all <right>. I'll be ready. <laughs> uh, one of them that I always think of is the Oscar Meyer Wiener one. That one's also allegedly yeah. <laughs> the Mandela effect. Man, I just I just can't get into the Mandela effect though because I'm like, oh no, I'm 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 like I don't know what's wrong with me, um, but like I pay way too much attention to stuff, and I just feel like I can explain all of them. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty um, I was pretty uh, obsessed with it a few years back. Yeah. Yeah, but then I'm like, you know what? Like, <laughs> people have terrible memories, so I I don't know if this is. <laughs> this is legit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's interesting. There was one, oh god, what was it? There was something not too long ago, and I was like, holy cow, does this mean that I now believe in the Mandela effect? But I can't for the life of me remember what it was. <sighs> it was a relatively new one that people have pointed out. I used to do reactions to them pretty frequently on YouTube. So I feel like I've heard a lot of them. Some involving Jim Carrey, like his movies and stuff. And even the spelling of his name is, you know, they say that that's, uh, that has changed. Mm -hmm. I think it's like one R versus two R's or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you all thinking of Mariah Carey? <laughs> because <laughs> she had one R. <laughs> Unless that's changed now, too, in which case that's not normal. Um, anyway, guest box is open, guys. If you have a spooky story, feel free to come up and share it with us, preferably about the Loch Ness Monster. I'm just going to keep saying it until somebody does it. Um, You're going to have to tap the screen, send some hearts, guys, get the stream out to people. Yeah, you're going to have to put up the. <laughs> Thank you. That's so cute. The little crowd thing of a bob. It's cute. Um, Baron C. Baron. Yeah. Yeah. Cat Mama was talking about that one the other night. That's, I think that's like the first one I ever heard aside from, you know, Nelson Mandela himself uh, and the circumstances surrounding him passing away. Yeah. Because obviously that's where it got its name from. But, uh, I see the Lost Boys. Hello and welcome. Hey, what's up? Not much. What are you doing? Uh, just chilling. Uh, I can't cam up right now. I don't have that much followers. Uh, that's fine. I think that's a question. Awesome. Let's hear it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this takes place in New Mexico, you know, and, um, Native American, and uh, you know, all of my life, um, I would say the Sasquatch has always been, it's always kind of been there, you know, um, ever since I was young. Um, just uh, maybe some footprints, you know, as, as a youngster down, we would go fishing down this um, San Juan River and uh i kind of grew up there you know just kind of different places um different relatives and uh anyhow so uh you know i've seen a sasquatch uh footprint since i was i don't even know my my earliest uh 
I would say experience was um, I can't even like pinpoint it. Maybe like eight or nine, you know, when I first seen a Sasquatch print, and it was just so interesting, you know, because uh, my uncles wouldn't they wouldn't really tell me what it was, or my my family they were just kind of like, nah, that that's just my foot, you know, and these uh, footprints were just so huge. And so, um, anyhow, so time, you know, years go by and, um, you know, I, I just think that, uh, I, I did, uh, encounter a Sasquatch, uh, I would say where I grew up, um, kind of like in the same area, but in a, in a different, different part of that town, I would say kind of further up, but, um, it was just, uh something i've never um experienced before you know it, it was um uh, it, it was really strange i would say it it just kind of i guess it, it kind of awoken me to you know to know that there is something out there mm -hmm. you know and, and especially where i grew up in uh down these farm roads and you know this was close to in um uh, close to the river and i was standing um, over a cliff once and um my, my first encounter um you know there was these crows flying around and i was out there in the morning because i had a uh, did school and i was you know i was walking back from school to where we had lived at the time and uh, you know, I, I've noticed these crows, and um, these crows were kind of buzzing around, and and it was just very strange because uh, why would you know crows be in in one area? You know, it just kind of blew my mind like that. And um, anyhow, so I you know I go check out this noise, and um, I'm standing over the cliff, and I see these crows flying around everywhere and they're landing on this particular tree and um and i was just kind of watching this tree you know it's kind of i would say got caught my attention you know and um this uh these crow all these crows were landing on this one tree and um you know as they were landing and I don't even know how many crows there were, like 20 or 30 or 50 or, you know, it's just, they were just accumulating and, uh, you know, behind that tree in the distance, that, that's when I heard, you know, the Sasquatch, you know, and I, I know it was a Sasquatch and uh, it, it had a really loud voice. You know, it sounded like a like a bear at first, and you know I've never encountered a bear my whole life, but you know I kind of get the idea of a what a bear sounds like, but at the same time it it sounded like a bear, but his voice was it was like a like a man's you know just like a guy really deep voice, like just intertwined at the same time and uh you know it just sounded so loud and so kind of like dinosaur like and uh it just freaked the shit out of me you know and um you know i'm standing there and i'm, I'm wanting to see this thing and i'm looking around me to see if you know something was just gonna jump on me you know at that exact moment and um you know, luckily it didn't, and so, um, you know, that, that was kind of like my first, um, I would say, uh, experience with Sasquatch, and, um, you know, I try to tell people about that story, and they just, they just kind of laughed at me, you know, my, my uncles, my, my brother, one of my brothers was like, oh, shit, he, you know, he believed me, but, I don't know, it was just so weird, <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah, it's something that until you experience it, you can't wrap your head around it. And uh, I totally can relate to what you're saying. Uh, you tell people and just, they don't get it, and they're not going to until they have their own experience. Yeah, and, and you know, I was just kind of ridiculed, so it was kind of like, how to say, kind of swept under the rug for many years, okay? And, uh, you know, as time goes by, you know, I don't know how many years later, maybe like, 12, 13, I don't know, it's been a long, long time since that had happened until I um, went out to uh, these uh, mountains, they call the Chiska Mountains, and they belong to, uh, they're like native, uh, it's like a sacred mountain to my native people, I would say, and, um, you know, I was out there, I was uh, sent to do a job, and uh, you know, the first day I got there in the mountains, you know, I was just so macho and my uh, my friend's mom kept warning me that there was a Sasquatch in the area and that it was so massive and so crazy the way she, you know, was talking about it nonstop, you know, from Cal Colorado to, <laughs> to the Chiska Mountains. So it was a long drive, you know, and when when we got there, you know, she kept, you know, talking to me about it and I told her, you know, I'm I'm a pretty strong um person. I'm a pretty spiritual and uh I I just don't get scared that easy, I would say. And so um, you know, I had a gun, I had whatever, bone arrows and spears and just stuff that I had with me at the time and I would say weaponry, you know, however you want to say it. Um, so I, I was pretty, pretty sure I was safe, I would say. And I was a lot older ever since that, you know, that first time I was so young. And, you know, anyhow, so um, as soon as they took off, you know, I heard that same, same yell I've heard all those many years ago. And I know just what that was. And nobody else can convince me that was just a person. Because it's not, that wasn't. No guy, I don't care how big, fat, old, you know, in, in the human form can have vocals that freaking loud. Like he, I couldn't even have vocals that loud. I mean, I always sound so different when I... If I, you know, yelled out, I just sound so different. And uh, anyhow, so I, I heard that same uh, vocals, you know, the, the Sasquatch yelling, yelling out. And just then my friend had took off and I was by myself in, in the mountains. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, I, I wanted to fight this thing or whatever it was, but I was, you know, kind of thought about it. And uh, I backed down and I, uh, you know, had gone into, I would say, the cabin that night. And, you know, it was just so strange, I would say, that first night. Um, the night, the following nights after that, I would hear scratching on the cabin, right? It, it's not even a cabin. I don't know if you guys know what a, a hogan is it's like an octagon um it's, it's like a kind of like a cabin octagon i would say yeah and uh there's no windows on these uh on this hogan so you know and there's just like cracks you know because it filled out of mud and stuff and um anyhow there was this like this big old crack inside right beside where i was um laying at and so you can actually see inside that whole gun. And you can see who is inside there. So I was inside there. And I know this thing would always come around and look at me. And uh, just kind of mess with me. You know, it would just kind of scratch on the walls and scratch where my head is, you know, outside um, like where I was laying. And it was really... Uh, really a strange uh trip i had out there i would say really 
I don't know if you could call it a vacation, you know, like <laughs> definitely a beautiful area, you know, it's just uh just all nature and uh yeah, so you know that the Sasquatch is so strange like that, I would say, and it, it I don't know if that would be my last time, you know, encountering Sasquatch, but it, it it's always kind of been there i would say in my life and it's kind of like my my paranormal story i would say my my cryptid story or and i, I told this story many times to way different people you know but i appreciate you guys having me up here you know um letting yeah. me share Thank you. yeah absolutely um, I wanted to ask, have you ever heard of the uh, Ron Moorhead Sierra Sounds? Sounds? It's, uh, they're called the Sierra Sounds, like from the Sierra Nevada oh, okay. mountains. Yeah, yeah. Sierra Sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have, did what you heard, did it sound like that at all? Because I've always wondered, because I've never heard the sound a Bigfoot makes, but I, I did have a Bigfoot encounter myself once, but I didn't hear anything. So I'm always curious uh, for people who do get to hear them vocalize, if, you know, if it's comparable to what Ron Moorhead captured on the Sierra Sounds. Yeah, well, um, I, I have to watch that again, but that one's kind of more like, you know, just like owling. Mm -hmm. Like they were more like howling, but this this Sasquatch sounded pissed. You know, he sounded pissed like like I was, but more intense. You know, he's more. I don't know if it's a he or a she. I, I I believe it's a he, and uh, you know, I I believe he's just uh, one of those Sasquatches who just has a bad temper. You know, and he mm -hmm. really. Uh, they sound so uh, aggressive and so strange. I would say, like, like, you know, even after that first night, I've heard that, you know, <laughs> I I have a friend. She was just like, you know, even after that first night, I would have just left, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, I thought about it. I was thinking because I, I did spend that night there. I I just wanted to leave the next day. But um, I had a job to do up there. So, you know, it just, I don't know, it just kind of, it really made me, I would say, uh, curious about how it really looked. But um, since I'm a big old chicken shit, you know, I, I don't go and venture out in the uh, pitch black, you know, day of night alone especially in a mountain area by myself, you know, I'm not that, I'm not that, uh, willing to die, I would say, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not willing to die like that and sacrifice my life, you know, just to see a Sasquatch, but I, I haven't really personally seen it, but I, I believe, I believe it's, you know, it's there, it, you know, that, Sasquatch is a real thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It really is, and you know, and my my mom, my mom's had a, a Sasquatch encounter, and she's a little lady. She's just, she's just like, I would say, four feet five inches. And um, you know, she was telling me, and I, I'll tell you about that too. And um, this is in Colorado. And, um, you know, she uh, was watering, um, and, and they lived next to a, like, the U Mountain area, and they kind of lived next to some, I would say, sticks. I would say, like, there are just so many, um, kind of like a wild area, I would say, when I say so much. I kind of call it the sticks, but they're like, uh, it's just kind of like a rural area, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're like the last house before you go to this rural area. And, um, you know, she told me all those years ago, you know, she was, uh, she came out once 
and she was watering uh, plants. And, um, you know, this was like towards sundown. And um, there's a shed to the right of, of that house um, where my mom lives with her um, common law husband. And um, this shed is pretty tall. I, I've been, I stood next to that shed. And okay, so um, so she's telling me she's watering the plants. And uh, she looks to her right. And she sees this tall beam standing there. And she knew what it was. And it was a big red Sasquatch. And uh, he was peeking out on the, you can um, see he was towering over that shed. And he was, his head was right above it, just a bit, like, maybe like a foot. And he was just kind of peeking out his, his face, you know, a little bit. And, um, and then he stood out. He, he actually came out of, you know, of view. He came into full view, right, and looked right at my mom. And she said she had um, felt um, paralyzed, I would say. She, she just felt some kind of weird power coming over her. Like she couldn't move. She couldn't, like, like it, it, it did something to her, you know, just by staring at her. And she was just like, whoa, tripping out by the Sasquatch, you know. And she was saying it was covered in, in hair. You know, all, all just down top of his head, all the way down to his body. And she did say it was red. And uh, it, it was very strange, she said. And then after she had, you know, gained, um, regained control, she, uh, you know, went back inside and she told her husband, you know, and... Um, He, he didn't want to go out there. You know, he just said, oh, you know. He, he didn't really say anything too much. I don't even know if he even believed her, but she said she's seen it. And um, so, you know, I'm I'm like 5'5", five, five, and uh, I stood right next to that shed. And that shed's like, and like eight feet up there, six, seven, eight feet. You know, close to nine feet. And that Sasquatch, if it can tower that high over it, I believe it was like close, about nine and a half feet. I'm not even sure, but it was so tall. You know, it was so tall. Like, how can something that tall, you know, run through those sticks and, you know, slip by all those people? It was so weird. Like, but it, like I said, it was kind of towards sundown, so and people were probably inside, you know, watching TV or whatever people do, sundown, you know, yeah. relax or whatever they do. But um, yeah, so yeah, it, it's been a part of my family, you know, for for a long time, though. Say, and, well, we yeah. appreciate you sharing your story with us. We always like to hear. Uh... My cat is having to take trip. <laughs> we always like to hear squatch stories. Oh, there goes my my pin for my phone. Give me that. <laughs> hey. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, this cat man, he ruins every stream. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we appreciate you telling us about that. It's really interesting, and and there squatch isn't real thing. I mean, it's out there. You know, yeah, it it's really definitely is. out there. No, I've I've had um. How do you say, uh, even encounter with um, little people, you know, I don't know if you even believe that there is little people, and uh, but they don't let you see them. They don't, they don't, um, not as much, I would say, it just depends on who you are, really, you know, what kind of person you are. And, Mm -hmm. all of that and uh but um you know i i've encountered some in that area and they were walking by once 
and I was in a tent and I heard these two little guys speaking English and uh, you know when I wanted to jump out of the tent I had already zipped the damn tent up so I had to bust you know zip it out and bust out of the tent and uh, they were gone they were already I don't know what they are but they are so tricky i would say they're just so yeah fat and so strange like that like so so there's all kinds of different things you know like um in in that area that that toyak area so uh, on the reservation you know yeah yeah we actually we have a lot of stories here um pretty much every week we have a couple stories about little people and uh, Lodge Tales. I don't know if you've ever seen Lodge Tales' channel. Um, he comes up and tells us stories about the little people and Chief. Uh, Chief has told us quite a few stories about it. And it's really interesting. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's it's just so cool. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to think of it, but it's just really interesting. And um, I would love to see something like that. I, I had an experience that I'm kind of on the fence about, but I don't, I don't count it as the little people, you know, but yeah, it's, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you would love to see it. You know, you don't, you don't actually see it. Yeah. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> bring the camera out there to be like, Oh, Hey, here I am to film you and, you know, sit down and interview you and, I think it just kind of depends on where you're at in life, you know, what kind of, um, what you're going through. Let's say you're going through a hard time, and, you know, it's somewhere you kind of just end up like me, like I ended up out there because um, I ended up homeless. And, um, you know, that's when they actually decided that they wanted to uh, talk. You know, they decided that they wanted to um, appear in, in some kind of way, and it just kind of had me, I would say, tripping out, I would say, just kind of bewildered or just kind of questioning. And then I've always been out in those, in that area, like, I've always been out there. And then all, white of, all of a sudden, you know, that. It just kind of like, oh, it was strange. Huh. Well, we really appreciate you coming up and talking with us and uh, sharing your squatch story, especially. We love those. So, you have a brother who, uh, who has, I would say he has his stories too. And um, he, he's seen the people. Mm -hmm. And he's also seen um, different different things like like cryptids. I would say like he he'll tell me like this one time he was you know outside his house and he was smoking and uh, he said this this thing just jumped out right in front of him and it was like a like a blob. He said like a white white blob. He, he was telling me and it looked like that uh you know that um it looked like blubber yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was white he said and it was so massive and uh he said it stood right in front of him and then it you know took one i don't know if he said it crouched down and then it, it just took one more leap and it just took off right in front of him and it was just so weird, you know, that he was telling me that. And he's just like, I don't know what that was. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I I, I, I don't know if it was a SW, a shapeshifter, or like um, something alien. Mm -hmm. I mean, how weird, you know, for something to... I would say appeared like that. It was it's so strange. 
We've mm -hmm. had similar reports to that in the area that I'm from originally, like around the tri-state, West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio. Um, very similar to what you just described. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, I wonder if it's the same thing. What was your, what was the stories about that? Um, let me pull up my notes here. I've got it saved. Uh, so I was going to make a video on it. Um, best I can remember, it was, uh, so there's like several cryptids, uh, mostly in West Virginia, like along the, kind of along the Kentucky line. Uh, there's Sheep Squatch, and there is, um, we have the Grave Digger, um, and then there is, um, oh, what is that other one? What is oh, the Grave find... Digger like? What is that like, um? They kind of, they describe it as like, there haven't been very many recent reports. They describe it kind of sounds like a dog man. Yeah. Um, it's very big uh, and very like canid. So it has like dog-like features, you know, it has like the, the dog muzzle, the claws. Um, and the people who claim they've seen it, they say that they see it digging up graves and like digging in graveyards. Um Oh, okay, the other one was the West Virginia White Thing. And uh, let's see, there are reports of that one all the way back to the 20s, the 1920s, around Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, and that one's kind of interesting because even though it appears to be a cryptid, a lot of people say that when they get attacked by it, it's like a ghost phantom attack. So they feel like they're being, you know, mauled by a dog but then nothing actually happens so it's like a paranormal experience it's really strange what's it called again sorry that one that one's called the west virginia white thing i'll have a video up about it here pretty soon okay. um west virginia white thing huh dang mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really strange and interesting story, but uh, I'll, I'll probably, I think, I haven't got this one posted yet, so it'll probably be up hopefully this week sometime, and I'll, I'll be talking about that one, because I think that one's really spooky. Yeah. It's really different than a lot of cryptid encounters that people have around here, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there was, um, my landlady even said she had a, some kind of cryptid uh, encounter here in this neighborhood in Colorado. And uh, I kind of hate to say where because uh, <laughs> I just want to kind of remain anonymous. I would say not, you know, give away my exact location. Like, oh, hey, he lives in that town. I know that town. I'm living in that town, you know. I don't, I don't want people saying that, you know. Um, okay, so this story... She said one night there's this uh thing standing on top of this house. You know, she's looking outside her window and there's this weird uh creature looking out um it, it was um standing on top of this neighbor's house and she was you know it was a massive she was telling me and how it had a um i don't know she said it was like had like a mouse like ears kind of roundish but i don't know just the way that she described it was kind of strange and um she said it had like a long tail and it had um a stronger upper body and um it, its face was very strange and it was just so weird that she was um you know describing it and i, I tried to look you know on the internet for this cryptid and um the closest i've come come across was some kind of weird um I don't know, it was some kind of weird uh, 
creature, I would say, but she was saying that it wasn't that. So, I'm not yeah, even that's sure. That's really strange. I haven't heard of anything like that personally, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Um, dang, I, I can try to look it up real fast. Um, not unless you got some other person. Chris, are you asleep on the couch? No, I'm asleep on the bed. Oh. Well, I'm laying down, but I'm going to sleep. <laughs> if you guys hear me snoring, <laughs> then me, it might happen. Well, I'm just a little tired tonight. But I'm yeah, here. I am too. I'm, yeah, same. <laughs> I know, I know everybody's here to see me, so. <laughs> Um, the picture behind me, that is, you know, I always tell everybody that it's the Pope Lick Goat Man, but honestly, it's kind of a sheep squatch. I mean, let's be real. It's mm. kind of a sheep squatch. So I guess I'm going to have to start telling people that it's sheep squatch. Mm. Uh, formerly okay. known as the Goat Man from Public. <laughs> Are you back? Mm. Yeah, um, I'm here. Uh, so, I do have a uh, a story that my uncle uh, that I got from one of my uncles, you know, down in that area. And uh, so one night, you know, he uh, he said he was going outside to, you know, use, you know, to relieve himself. I would say, you know, to to use the restroom and. Uh, it, it was like past midnight, you would say, and, uh, and they only got one porch light and the rest of the house, you know, back of the house is so dark. So he, you know, goes into this dark area, takes care of business, and uh, he said he, he heard uh, this goat, you know, he started hearing hooves walking down the highway because they live right next to this, um, to this road. Um, and then he can hear it coming and, um, you know, and he, he stays quiet behind the shadows and he said he, he just hears this thing approaching this hooves and, uh, and then he said it got into the light and he can see what it was like. It was, a. Uh, a goat man, he would say. You know, just half man, half goat, and it was just strange how he was describing it, and you know, just talking about it, it was so weird. And so it, I don't know, I don't know if I even believe him, but it was so strange. I mean, yeah, the goat man stories are interesting. Um, we have we have the Pope Lick here. That's what I was just talking about when you were uh, off the app. Uh, we have the Pope Lick Goat Man. I know that Texas has a Goat Man legend. What I think is really interesting about them is like our Pope Lick Goat Man is indirectly associated with um, Pan. If you're familiar with like Greek gods, there was a Pan statue in a cemetery not far away from where a lot of the Pope Lick sightings were. And a lot of people believed that at night, Pan would take off out of the cemetery and go roam. And of course, he's, you know, he's Pan, so he's kind of a goat man. <laughs> and I just love how the lore connects, you know, like it's it's just so interesting how the stories kind of like come together like that. Yeah. Um, well, we really appreciate you coming up and sharing stories with us. Uh, I think I've got... Uh, a bunch of people waiting. I'm going to try to get a few more guests up tonight, but uh, hopefully you'll stick around and come back sometime and tell us some more stories. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Very cool. I love the stories of like uh, the satyrs. 
I think that's so interesting. Not a lot of people, I think, even know what that is, but it's kind of like, kind of like pan, but not technically pan. Um, a goat man. Yeah. The, and the, the cool thing about like, one of the things I love about the goat man stories is like, there's variations, but one of the variations is like, he leads young lovers to leap to their demise. And I, I just feel like that's so tragically romantic. I don't know. It's just such an interesting story. Um, I think you were waiting first. I, I might do a goat man video actually, cat mama. Hello and welcome. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so I have a pretty interesting uh, ghost story. Okay. So, uh, pretty much where I live, I live like in an old mining town. And my homie, one of my buddies, used to like live in like the last standing, way up in the hills house. Like, it, it was struck by lightning multiple times for whatever reason. Craziness. But I, I'm, i like, kind of a I have to see it to believe it kind of person. Like, I don't, I didn't really believe in ghosts until I seen this. But <clears throat> I woke up in the middle of the night at this guy's house, my homie's house, like, way up in the boondocks. And... Snapped awake. I'm a heavy sleeper. I snapped awake one night, like at his house, and just like looked into like his kitchen area, and I seen like a little girl just like waving at me. I was like, "Huh, that's weird." I was like half asleep, so I just like kind of dismissed it and went back to bed. I woke up like the next morning, and like I realized that like there was no no girls in the house at all. I just like kind of kept it to myself. I was like, huh, that's that was weird. Like three years go by, my buddy who was also there that night, we were like kind of hanging out like on my front porch and just like talking about ghosts and just like stuff like this and just like, hey, yeah, do you remember that one night at so and so's house? I was like, yeah. He's just like, yeah, I went up to go to the bathroom and like after I got out of the bathroom. I looked into his living room and there was like a little girl just standing there waving at me. And I was like, whoa, like what? It, it was like the weirdest thing, like. Is that your only experience with it, with that particular apparition? It was just like very weird that we both seen the same thing on the same night. We never really talked about it, mm -hmm. but we both seen the same exact like entity at, like that night. So, but you'd never had a paranormal experience before that, right? Yeah, no, that was like that. That was like that was like the yeah. Like I was saying, it's like I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. But after I seen it that night. When I woke up, it was like a snap. Like I like snapped awake and like I looked and like I seen her just like waving like in the living room or no, and she was in the kitchen when I seen her. And then my buddy went to the bathroom later that night and seen him in like the living room. And when like we discussed it, here's the craziest thing about this whole story. Like when me and my buddy realized we've seen the same apparition ghost soul whatever you want to call it that night we're like holy shit that's wild and like i talked to my buddy's mom who owned the house and she's like yeah we don't talk about her like she knew who it was apparently a well-known ghost around those parts <laughs> oh that's that's a uh, pretty spooky um, yeah, it was very I'm, I'm glad that you got to see something that uh, changed your mind or your opinion on the paranormal. I love when that happens, by the way, when people are like, there are no such thing as ghosts. It's like, well, wait till you see one. <laughs> That's exactly like how it went down. I was like, yeah. yep, nope, I don't, I don't believe in ghosts. Oh, what's that? Is that is that my yeah. buddy's sister? Oh, no, there's no girls in this house. And then my buddy, three years later, 
telling me that he'd seen the ghost the same night that I seen that ghost. It's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a strange right. experience, but we appreciate you coming up and telling your story. Yeah, thank, thanks for letting me on. Thanks. Uh, let's see. I think I got somebody waiting. Yes. Hey, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take the next one? I'm going to take a pee break. Yeah, go for it. Okay. All right, let's see. Hello. How are you with us? I'm going to drop you and you can request again if you want to come back up because I don't hear anything. You guys didn't hear anything, right? You guys in the chat? Okay. All right. Hello. Hello. What's up? Not much. You got a story for us? Yeah. Um. So it's not. It ain't about ghosts or aliens or anything. But it's very. It is definitely interesting. And um, yeah. I mean, I I just don't know exactly what it was. So. Um. All right. So about. I would say about four years ago. Um. I was on I was on the East Coast, a uh, city called Erie. Uh, things were going, things were getting really crazy. My phone was doing things that um, I didn't know how or why it was doing it. So I thought it was glitching for the longest time. Then I started thinking it was hackers. And then uh, I, I would get messages left in my text like inbox. Like when you click it to go send a message, there would be a message in there. So I'm like, it's definitely got to be hackers right now. And this went on for a while. Um, and then it started getting like to other people's phones and it would just do weird things. So anyways, let me speed up a little bit more. Um, as I look into it more and more, um, whatever this thing was, uh, basically started stuff between me and my family, everybody. So to isolate me. Uh, so I wanted to get out of the city I was at. So I met this girl. She's like 10 hours away from me. Um, as soon as I get in the car to head out that way, I had this like crazy feeling that I shouldn't even go. And so I ended up going anyways. So it was a 10 hour drive, about three hours into the drive. Uh, the, the my godmom, the one that was driving me, she notices that there was three Hummers, uh, military Hummers in front of me and three behind me. I didn't think nothing of it. So she switches lanes, they switch lanes. And like they were with us for like an hour and a half. So we, I told her to get off the highway, get off the highway. We're sitting at a McDonald's for like 20, 30 minutes. I'm thinking, you know, they're not gonna bug us no more. I couldn't even understand why they were doing it. So we get back on the highway, same thing. They get right three in front of us, three behind us. And I, I really couldn't tell you what that was all about, but I get to the place where I was at and this girl turns out to be like the most horrible person. I don't know if I can say this where I, she was a, a numphomaniac uh, narcissist. And I get there and I'm 10 hours away from home. I ain't got no car. I'm just trying to start my life over. And uh, she turns out to be like this, the nastiest person literally I've ever met. And she starts beating up on me and uh, like all kinds of crazy stuff. So I look up and I see this Bible up on the top shelf and I'm, I'm not religious whatsoever, but I picked the Bible up and literally open it up and it says, run to the east, my son. And I couldn't tell you where this was, but it said, run to the east, my son, son, evil comes from the north. So I get out of there, I take off, I'm walking down this road, I'm in uh, Hudson, New York, and uh, I'm walking for about four hours and there's like maybe, there was miles between these houses. And I was so thirsty and I'm like, 
please, can I need water. And I'm looking around trying to find something, couldn't find. And I come around the corner, it was like this ice cream looking place. I go back in that, the driveway, uh, there's like this, uh, uh, a bar basically set up. And I go up to the thing and I ask the guy, I say, hey, can I get a cup of water? And he points at three cups right in front of me. He says, they've been waiting for you. And I, I'm like, what? And he turns around and walks away. I'm like, okay. So I drank all three of them cups. I turn around and I keep walking. Mm-hmm. And I realize I left my cigarettes at our house. I'm like, dang, I really need a cigarette. I look down, full pack of cigarettes, unopened. Picked them up. So I keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Um, I don't know how many get anywhere. I'm 10 hours away from home. Literally, I'm like, since I, I hope somebody just give me a ride. I'm trying to think of somebody I can call. Well, this dude pulls over, asks me if I want to ride. I'm like, yeah. So I get in the car, and I'm like, how far, how far are you going to take me? Where are you going? He's like, Pittsburgh. I'm like, oh, wow, bet. So I drive with this guy all the way to Pittsburgh, and uh, I get to Pittsburgh, and there's like this homeless shelter thing. And it, like, I'm leaving some of these, some of this stuff out of this story. Uh, maybe I should tell this part. Um, I was, I, I'm 230 pounds. And I can take care of myself. So, but this, whatever this thing is, whatever it was, it's, it scared me so bad that like, I couldn't, I I wouldn't be able to sleep. Um, and I literally ran away from home because of it. But so anyways, um, I have an idea that it's a multidimensional being and, um, it's, there is multidimensional beings and they feed off of, um, the energy that we emit and uh so humans are like sponges we uh accumulate energy whether it be through um you know peace or or whatever or love or but we accumulate it and then we um disperse it and um if you think about it if you're a multi-dimensional being you ain't got no body feel no emotions then like and you got you i mean i don't want to say feed but that's literally what it is um you you need to eat and if you think about it you when you're being when you're when you're peaceful and loving and caring you're not you're not really doing anything you're you're calm you're you're still when you're angry you're upset or self-loathing or whatever now you're you know bursts of energy coming and that's what i believe these things feed off of um but so I end up getting to Pittsburgh. I end up getting back home. Um, and, uh, I don't know. Um, so I get home and my mom and my girl and my brothers and shit were like so upset with me and mad at me. And uh, some crazy stuff went down. The cops got called. I ended up going to jail. I was on probation. But anyways, I told my mom, my girl, my brothers, that any protections I had put up for them on taking down, that you guys got to take care of yourselves now. And uh, my mom died about 25 days later. Uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I'm pretty sure it does because uh, what happened when I got out of jail, went back there. I mean, the people with the stories that the people had, there was, my mom was talking about cats and snakes and there was cats and there were snakes there. And uh, I ended up, my brother had people staying there, ended up kicking them all out. Later on that night, I heard something in the basement. I went downstairs and uh, I don't I don't know if it was paralysis or what, but I, I couldn't move. And everything just started flying around the room. Uh, literally the, the, the washer, the dryer, boom, boom, boom. And this is 100%, this is absolute truth. Uh, this thing started growling at me, laughing at me. Um, And I told it that it would never hurt my loved ones. And it it kept reminding me of, uh, um, I uh, I got her. He kept saying, I got her, I got her, I got her, I got her. But, uh, um, so I, uh, I ended up leaving there and going to, um, a rehab facility just to get away. Um, I had been talking to this girl for a couple of years and we were talking about getting me down to Arizona, which is where I'm at now. But um, 
and I, I've been down here for about a year. Anyways, anybody listening, you too, bro, spiritual hygiene is very, very important. I urge anybody, everybody, look into meditation, grounding, cleansing, because this is, yeah, this is like serious stuff. And um, the world is changing. And I don't know if it's on our end or if it's on their end or if it's always been this way, but more and more of the same exact thing because I can see this in people and I've had people in my life literally tell me they accepted because um, I, I ch this is how I explain. I explain it when, when, when somebody goes through a very traumatic experience, whether it be, um, you know, physical, emotional or whatever. Um, this, whatever these things are, they reach their hand out like they're a friend, like they can help. And yeah, it's, at first, I guess that's it. But I've had so many people in my life say that they've accepted it and they've, they're, they're friends with it. And, you know, um, and it's just, honestly, it's, it's really, it's, it's scary. Like right now, I'm like, my heart's racing. Uh, I gotta calm down. I know that. I don't want to bring it back around. But, uh, yeah, um, it's just, that's pretty, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things, like, in between that, but, like, there are, uh, there's other life, there's other, there's other life besides us, besides what we can see, um, and the veil is being lifted, but it's up to us as to what for real, as to what we want to see, because I, this, uh, it's been about eight months and I haven't seen it. I haven't felt anything out of the ordinary. Um, I mean, I've seen it maybe in some, in a person driving, but it's not, hasn't gotten close to me. It hasn't gotten near me. And I know that there's more than one because I've dealt with more person, more than one personality. Um, but yeah, so yeah and I, I and it, this might have to do with because i thought it was a fun thing to do when i was in my teens like dark magic but i don't understand why it wouldn't go like start right when i was doing that maybe it started because i denied it i didn't want to do it no more i wanted to do good even when i was doing dark magic i wasn't doing bad things i was just doing things for myself which is what dark magic is low magic is for yourself High magic, white magic is for another. But, yeah, so, I don't know. My life's completely changed, though, now. I completely love my life, and I think that I think that the Creator, God, whatever you want to call it, I believe that all of it was put into place like that so that I could have this appreciation. And now I'm around people that I love. They love me, and uh, I don't get called a piece of shit every single day. I get called a good person, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that I don't is know good to hear, and we appreciate you very much. We appreciate you sharing your story with us. Yeah. Yes. Well, thanks for listening. I appreciate that. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Bye. And we got. We got. Oh no, they're gone. Yeah, Jiggly I saw them. And Jiggly Wiggly. <laughs> Does anybody remember that store, Piggly Wigglies? I Anybody don't remember Piggly Wigglies. I think it was a Southern thing. Um, we had them. Where did we have? Hmm. I don't know. Somewhere around Kentucky, we had a Piggly Wigglies, I think. And you know what's funny? And I feel like this is something that could easily be a Mandela effect. Is like when I was a little kid, there was this really catchy jingle for um, Ballard's. And Ballard's, for some reason, and Piggly Wiggly were very similar in my childlike mind. And, and I always think, like, every time I think of Piggly Wigglies, I think of B-A-L-L-A, -L -L you know, <laughs> like the little jingle for Ballard. So it's like, wait a second, that's a different store. What am I doing? Um, <laughs> totally off the wall story there for you guys, just because I know you love them. Uh, whoever that was in the guest box, feel free to come back. Um, we've had a bunch of people. I'm, I'm sorry if I've missed you guys. Like, uh, I know we've had a lot of people come up in the box tonight. Uh, it's, it was a lot busier. 
I didn't expect it to be too busy tonight. And I was like, oh, I'll try to get to everybody. Um, so if you if you didn't make it and you want to come back up, feel free. Jump in the box, come up, tell us a story. Tell us your spookiest spooky story of all spooky time. Um, we have, we have Chief. Chief. What's up, Chief? Wow. Hello. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm I'm being I'm not being rude, but wow. So, <laughs> what what do you mean by that, Chief? Um, you want me to be honest, or you want me to be political? Uh, be honest. Just don't say anything too crazy. Okay, well, <laughs> I think your friend was under the influence. No. Could and be. He was. He was even fishing for, uh, for for uh, material. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he made it was interesting. I'm just being. I know I'm. I'm being political. Yes. So I'm done. End of it. I got a story. How are y'all doing tonight? We're good. How are good. you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, I had my first, um, I had my first troll. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't a bad experience. Young man, full of fire. Um, of course, you know, he's, his speech was a little, a little raw. And then I remembered why I quit doing that. Because I roasted that poor boy. And I was, I, and you know what's sad? It felt good. So I had to stop. I, I got out of there. And I thought, wow. It was that fast for me to regress. But then I come to and I'm like, okay, no more. So here I am out and about. And I wanted to see you. It's been a while since I've been to the room. Normally you have uh, the other guys in here too. The other, your, your other usual story people uh joel was it yeah. joel uh joel's yeah, father, joel was fired. On. yeah uh, <laughs> chris Lone, fired Lone, him <laughs> loan and uh someone else but yeah yeah so you know so i've been i've been wandering and it's really been interesting out there folks so i, I gotta i gotta give you some, some um sasquatch and I'm, I'm, I, I, I have one too. And everywhere you go, he's there, you know. We've discussed this, and I, I was listening to, I was watching chat, and there's a lot of them that the way they, they were typing, we would have been, we would have been laughed out of town, you know, that they would have called us weird, they would have had all kinds of different names for us. But it's a good place to be able to do that now. So, my I I I know that that's what this traveler. He comes from place to place, and we well, we never caught Sasquatches because he can walk between worlds. And you ever think about it? I mean, you could surround him, you can have dogs chase him down, but they never caught him. How many pictures have we have over the years? My grand, my uncle, God bless his soul, been gone for a few years. Was a BIA uh, police officer in Washington State. Him and my my auntie and her just newborn, my cousin, son. He must have been about maybe two or three years old. And they were, you know. Um, they were living there, and then my, my auntie had never really been out of out of Browning. And her husband, he was out of he was a Vietnam vet, tough guy, macho, strong guy. And so one night, you know, he was he just getting off of I think he was just getting off of a patrol. He was getting ready to lay down. Lay that little guy down, my cousin. Lay him down and get ready to go to bed. 
His beat was a long day. He was saying as he sat down, and he put that little guy to sleep, and he was getting ready to go. Him and my auntie were getting to go to bed. Most loudest, most blood crying, curdling scream come from my cousin. And he was just yowling. He was just like, like, he, oh my God. And it, my auntie said that it will always haunt her. Went the way her son screamed. And he was just a little guy, and you know, she just, she didn't know what was going on. They both got up. My uncle got up, grabbed his gun. We rushed it, and they were running in there to his room. It was a trailer. They run to that in that room. And that my my uh, cousin was underneath that bed, just shaking, crying. And he was just. It was just like he was just just traumatized. And my. Uh, my auntie picked him up and she started, you know how you, how you help children when they're like that? You, you, you nurture them, you tell them, you know, you'll be all right. And he's telling his mom, my auntie, no mom, no mom, scary thing out in that window. Something was looking in here, mom, something was scaring in here. And geez, you know, they, they both looked at each other and my uncle said, Went and got his, his, he put his service piece by way and he grabbed his shotgun. He said he was going to go outside to make sure it was checked. And as he got out there, he opened that door, it, it hit him. Smell. Now, a lot of people that have seen him say, well, not, it's not just him, probably family and whatnot. He smelt it. It was a musk. It was a heavy musk. It was, it was just overpowering. He about caked. It was so strong. And he goes out there and he was looking around. And they had dogs, so they should. The dogs should have heard something or seen something. But he went looking for his dogs too after that. Because right where that, right where my cousin's window was, the plants and everything were trampled. And my, my uncle said when he looked down, those feet, they looked like human feet. And, and it, it, the way he, they would walk up that window, they said it walked up a couple of times that was looking down. My cousin. And my cousin has never recovered, quite recovered. He used to, I don't know if you remember the, the fluffy, the fluffy um, dolls. Like Chewbacca from the Star Wars. Someone bought him one. Didn't show him until that night of his birthday. Oh, my cousin just freaked. He grabbed that, grabbed it, and threw it away. My auntie and I said, What's wrong, son? He says, That's how it looked. That's how it looked. And so that. So the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, whatever else you call him, he was he, he he's he watches you sometimes. And my cousin never ever recovered from that. But my uncle said that he's got there. He was looking for looking out to his seen the footprints. And his dogs, he looked for his dogs for days. Finally found them. They were just frightened. They barely came to him. Took them home. Nurtured them too. Those dogs were never the same either. He used to take them to go hunting. We go hunting like uh, in in Washington. They pretty much have what they have on the, on the over towards your way. They have bucks that we have mountain lion, wolves, all that stuff. And these dogs were bred to be strong and they would just never hunt again. Never the same. Uh, but that, that Sasquatch made a visit, freaked out my poor cousin. 
He was never the same. But, but you know, he's a traveler too. And he doesn't mean to do this stuff sometimes because he's curious. He was curious about my, about my good end. But he, in doing so, he just, he, he gave my cousin post-traumatic. Yeah. So, we you know, remember, you got to watch out your windows. Native Americans got black feet. We don't open our windows at night. We close them and we make sure that nothing we can't look out. Because they say when we look out, there's a chance that you, whatever's out there, will we'll get you. And sometimes they'll come and attach themselves to you. We don't whistle either at night. Same reason. You never know what you're going to call with that whistle. It's never good. It's never going to, you know, you, you think, well, it's random. It'll, something will get it done. But it's night. And night, that's when the, the bad stuff walks. So whistling calls them in. And they can hurt you. I've seen it happen. I've seen it. It, it did it to us. Thank you, ma'am. I needed to get that out. I no, appreciate it. Watching you guys is about that. And I thought of my cousin when he he never recovered. He still to this day he still has he has problems with with Sasquatch. Okay. Who's next? I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna put my ear and sit and watch. Okay, we appreciate you, Chief, as always. Ah, he always takes off, but I was going to ask him some. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> hey, you come back here. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You can, you can watch. It's fine. Um, now, what was I going to, I was going to ask him something about, um, I don't want to give too much away because I'm making a video this week. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking that, um, that I had already posted it, but we were talking about it in a minute. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. always take off so fast. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, no, I was going to ask you, did you hear what we were talking about uh, with the, like, I know it sounds crazy, but the sheep squatch and the West Virginia white thing? Because no, uh, I, I had a guest up earlier who was talking about um, somebody seeing like a white blob type creature and i was like that's interesting because I, I actually just this week was researching um sightings uh of of a similar creature mm -hmm. and uh so i was just wondering if you had ever heard of anything uh maybe not so much sheep squatch but maybe of like a, a white blobby cryptid no. creature no the cryptid that the the cryptid that comes to mind for you for that one is a, a you know what a satyr is yeah, yeah. We're half man, half goat. Mm -hmm. I think I think he ran through our country there for a long time. Call him Goat Man of all, you know, people being people, how they name things. It's the name yeah. of Goat Man. And he ran through, he went through Browning for a long mm -hmm. time. They would spot him. And every time they try to chase him, just like Sasquatch, they never catch him. And he would say, they say when he, he would run, he'd laugh. Yeah. When that laugh was just cold and, 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 and just, it was just evil sounding, you know, and people, people to this day, they still kind of like, they shiver when they hear, when they think of goat man. If they either shiver or they joke, because, you know, humor helps. So we have, we, we use humor to deflect stuff like that. But yeah, you see, we, we, had, we had him, but he's, ours was goat man. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, too. Uh, that's definitely very interesting. Um, goat man and pan and uh, satyrs and, and all that type of stuff. It's really interesting. Well, you know, there's an interesting movie that came out, and I never thought about it, but uh, he, he nails it real good. Do you know who Neil Gaiman is? Mm-hmm. 
He's a writer. Mm-hmm. He does a book called American Gods. Yeah. And you know, I read it and I thought, well, it's fiction. But it's really not because these people, they come, they brought their ways with them. And we don't, we, they don't, once they got here, you know, and the thing about America is we have culture, but we, we, the old cultures don't survive too long here. Because we say we, we're leaving them back to where, wherever they come from. Mm-hmm. We have, you know, the Germans, they have their kobolds. Their Greeks have their pan. Um, you know, they're every, every nationality that has been here, they have something like that. And, you know, we're just, we just, with all this humanity in one spot, become a beacon. Basically, eat at Joe's. <laughs> and it was eat at Joe's, and that was us. We were Joe. We were the menu. You know, they didn't eat us, but they, they, they had all this, this mental and emotional energy. And some of them, that's what they, they that's, that's. Like a wagyu steak to them. That the the misery, the pain, the suffering, and that's what they come here for. Some of them, so that's what they live for. So yeah, ours was ours was we think was a satyr, satyr. It was a, or we think it was a failed experiment. If we were gonna, if we were gonna go the scientific route, but I prefer the supernatural. Thinking somewhere, yeah. one of one of they they he was probably. They probably travel, you know, he got lost. Weird place to get lost, way out in the middle of the sticks on the reservation, but lost nonetheless. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I've heard of him. You know, we've had that, we've had that particular beastie running through Brownie. And like you said, I mean, Brownie has had a lot of stuff happened. A lot of that. This week alone, from what I understand, they lost somebody every day. And it's so busy over there for the for the um the funeral home that you have to schedule yourself your your funeral. Right now they're a whole month out. That's how bad it is. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. I mean, it's frightening in that sense that what is it? How do we get rid of it? Because it's, it, it, it's like it everywhere there's darkness and stuff like that, but, you know, I digress. I, I'm um, Anything else before I take off? <laughs> no, if I think of something, I'll be like, hey, you, get back up here. <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be watching. Alrighty. What do you think, horror? Did you like it, or was I? What do I need to brush up on my game? No, you always uh, do great. You always tell great stories, and I appreciate it. Good, good. I know you. I know you're uh, Ed McMahon to her Johnny Carson. So I figured I'd come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's um. What's oh god? What was Howard Stern's um, co-host? Robin. But yeah, I'm I your feel Robin. Like me and you, we are Conan and Andy. Oh my gosh, I love Conan. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I watched it religiously. Like I would become feral if somebody tried to stand in between me and the Conan O'Brien show at night. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> I just knew that me and him were going to be married someday, but he married somebody else. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a shame. Um, Holly's a huge fan of Chief Holly in the comments. Yeah, I saw Holly earlier. I didn't know if she was still here. I didn't I didn't get to say, uh, but I saw she was like, um, she said something about like, yeah, it's Sunday, my favorite live stream. And I, <laughs> I love that. That makes me so happy. It tickles me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, she's here. She's still here. Uh, yeah, Conan. Oh God, Conan O'Brien is amazing. I love that man. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm more of your uh, Jordan to your 
Conan, I think, maybe a little bit sometimes. You know that guy, Jordan, that he does those uh, videos with? I don't know if you've seen that. No, I don't. Now who's Jordan? I don't know who Jordan is. Any Jordan fans in the comments? There's got to be at least one. Yeah, but definitely check it out, though. If you go to Conan's YouTube, uh, or just look up Jordan Conan and Jordan on YouTube, yeah, they're really funny together. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the Bluegrass Army Depot. Man, that's a scary place. <laughs> I have heard, though, that um, they finally completed the, um, what can I say and what can I not say in regard to this, the munitions um, deconstruction. They finally completed it. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. I will not go into that town. I just I just won't even go to Richmond. I lived there a few times and I was on pins and needles the whole time I lived there because I was terrified of that place. Hmm. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy to me because like I had a lot uh, throughout the time that I lived in Richmond. I've lived there a couple of times. I had a lot of UFO sightings there. And I had no idea at the time that a lot of people felt like there was some type of connection between the depot and uh, the massive amount of sightings that everybody apparently has. Um, you're in Kentucky, but you've never been there. Yeah. Um, I do grass homes. Let's see, we got somebody. Oh, it's Lodge Tales. Oh. Well, hello. Hey. Yeah, just, just so you know, this is my favorite live, too, of all the lives out there. I look, I look forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. That makes me so happy. <laughs> and when I don't see you on, I'm like, oh, where is she? I'll sit up late waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's <laughs> not be on right now. Yeah, we're doing Sundays and Mondays. That's uh, that's kind of the the thing right now. So Sundays and Mondays we're usually here. But oh, okay. So I got a lot of stories here for everybody tonight. Um, everything from the Goat Man to Bigfoot to alcohol spirits. Uh, there's even a Horseman story, which I think no one's ever heard before. Ooh, yeah, but interesting. I, I have a lot here. Uh, dolls, also scary dolls. Uh, I got a lot. I'll just. Ooh. I'll go straight in. Also, some old kind of medicine type stories. I'll start with those. Um, okay. Okay, so a long time ago, us natives, we had this, we still have it today, but it's not as prevalent. We have this relationship with the spirits, right? Where we know how to, uh, how would I say it, um, re interact with them, but in, in holy ways. We don't do it in a bad way or anything. So, anyways, long time ago, imagine there's no. There's no colonizers here. There's no, it's just all indigenous people here at the time. And this is when this takes place, just during a time like that. It's an old story. But anyways, it, it goes to show everything and how it used to kind of go down. So people would go out to fast and they would, a spirit would come to them and they would teach them things to give them a gift if they thought they were worthy of it. And worthy of it, a lot of times, just means that you're willing to sit out there and sacrifice and go the extra mile. You know, I'm talking these sacrifices where people would go out and fast would be standing on a buffalo skull with thorns on top of the buffalo skull out in front of the summer scalding heat sun all day praying. Then at night they'd go to sleep and then the next day, and this is done for four days and four nights and uh, no food, no water. And they stand on that skull all day again until something comes because they want to see that you're you're going to actually do something with what they're going to give you. So they'll, chances are they'll take pity on you. But if not, then, you know, you try again later on down the road. Well, anyways, so these people would go out and fast, they'd get gifts. And the people in these tribes wanted uh, wanted people to listen to them, to, to uh, follow them, to say, hey, look, I can help. I have this gift that I got when I was out fasting. So what they were doing was they were in this big lodge on one side of this lodge, there was a bunch of holy people there that had gifts. And on the other side of the lodge, there was more. And what ended up happening was uh, they were all singing. They're all sitting there and they were having a display of their gifts. So in, in an attempt to get followers. 
And on one side, this guy, he, uh, he got up and he said, he says, I'm going to make all you guys fall down on your side. And he start dancing toward the door. And all of those people on that side, they grab their drums and they start singing their protection songs and waiting. Well, he danced toward that door three times. And then on the fourth time, he finally stepped out the door, but looked back in and waved with his left hand and knocked them all over on their sides. They all fell over. As soon as that happened, one of them got up and he started running around that crowd, around that circle that was sitting there in the middle, started running around all the people, all of them, all of them. Then he just basically disappeared because people didn't see where he went, but he turned. then when they all looked up, they seen a crow sitting up there. Just making noise up in those those uh, lodge poles that make the smoke hole. He was sitting up there looking down at them, you know. And people are like, ah, yeah, <laughs> you know. They they like these shows because they would do it a lot way back in those days. And that's just to to tell everybody like these natives really had strong medicine back in them days because they were more in tune with nature and those spirits that come from nature. So, anyways, the next one is. Um, the next story is, is about my grandpa, Owl Child, and how he passed away. And um, so what he did was uh, he he lived out at this lake. They call it Fourhorn Lake now. But um, he built a house out there, and he had some corrals and some, some cattle and stuff. Well, one day this, this little boy came out of that lake, and he told him, he said, uh, he said, that man down there, that lives in the lake he sent me up here that old man he sent me up here to ask you for your hat he wants your hat because owl child had just bought a new hat and he's really proud of it well he refused he says no he says you tell him tell him i don't want to give him a, this hat i just got it he said you sure he said yeah and so he went back down into that water that little boy went back into that water and a, a while later must have been a, i don't know how long but a while later that little boy came back out again, and Owl Child had just got done butchering a cow, and he had that hide over that corral, and it was drying. He was going to use that hide, and that little boy came back out, and he said, That old man wants your hide. He says he likes it. So all you could do is put it in that water, and he'll get it. He says, No, no, I'm going to keep that hide. I just I just got that. I'm going to use it. And that little boy said, Well, that man said he, if you give him these things, that he'll always protect you and keep your family safe. You guys will always do good out here but he wants that hide he told him no no i'm not gonna so that little boy went back into that water and disappeared into that lake and it wasn't long after that they were hauling logs from uh the mount like the pine area up by um blacktail they're hauling logs down from there in wagons and anyways uh it was a horrible accident all the something broke all those logs fell and killed him right there and his family had a really hell of a time too like he lost like i want to say his wife and one of the kids drowned in that lake it was really bad luck after that that's one of those stories of those um call them okita peaks the the water people that are in that lake that's an old story a really old one so um moving right along i'll tell this story that uh my wife's cousin told me so they broke down in their car driving into Browning and when they broke down uh, this car come over the hill and it was a kind of nice looking car and there was a fancy looking man in there and he said he says hey uh, you guys need a ride and uh, this happened to their old uncle their grandma's brother he said yeah we'll take a ride they couldn't get that car going and so they jumped in with him and uh, so they jumped in with him and he said yeah we're just going to Browning he says, do you guys want a drink? I said, oh, yeah, we'll take a drink. What do you got? He says, reach behind my, he says, under my seat. He's going to reach behind his seat and uh, grab that bottle. It's, it's under my seat. So their uncle reached behind there to grab that bottle. And he felt and he grabbed something and he pulled it. That man starts screaming, oh, like that, you know. <laughs> Here, what he did is he grabbed that tail. That man had a tail. And there wasn't even a bottle there. And, uh. They said, hey, I know what you are. I know what you are. You let us out right now. We don't want to ride with you no more. And he stopped, and he did. He let them out, and they just walked back to their car. But he kept telling them, begging, come on, I ain't going to do nothing. Just ride with me. 
But this is one of those stories of that thing too, that goat man thing. But uh, people don't really know exactly what it is because, you know, this lady actually got bothered by one her family did. And this thing, according to her, could turn into a, a giant goat, half man, half goat, and then just into a regular man. So I, I don't know, really, I mean, when it was a regular man, he said he wouldn't show himself to them because, because they would recognize him on TV. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of sent chills through me when she told me that. But uh, that's the one story of the goat man on that road. The next one is about uh, when I was a kid, I went to boarding school, the Blackfeet boarding school, and they would they would make us go home on the weekends and in the summer you couldn't stay down there. Well, as we came back one year, I remember hearing all of these stories that summer from the adults, and this is when I was about maybe 10 years old, and I, I heard all these stories about this goat man. And the stories, the first ones I heard were this new subdivision that was built called Flatiron. These people that were living there that got the new houses, that goat man walked right through their houses, but they didn't even open the door, nothing like that. Like, just phased right through the walls. And what was really weird about it was about three or four houses had the same story that they were they actually called the cops. And they have the same story that, imagine the house wasn't there and it was just ground and it was walking on the ground. That's all they seen was the upper half of it through their floor. Like, its legs were through the floor, but it walked right through their houses. And it didn't do nothing, didn't bother anybody, just walked straight through their houses. But they, they all have the same story, these people that experienced it, which is really, really creepy. And when we got back down to that boarding school that next uh, school year, one of our matrons told us the story. He said, when you guys were gone, he says, all of those cops had that goat man cornered right here. And the building is shaped like an I or an H, depending on which way you, you orientate it. But right in that horseshoe area is where they had it cornered and there's a rec room in there and that roof is about oh let's say about 25 feet tall everybody was scared to get out of their car but they had it cornered their lights on it and everything and it would just run back and forth and it would scream i guess it would really scream at them and finally this woman was the only one that was brave enough to get out and she got out and she aimed at it with her pistol now, I didn't even know why they're chasing the damn thing myself, but <laughs> this is the story you told her. She she aimed her pistol at it, and it started charging toward her, so she got scared, and she shot. Then all his men got out with her, and before they could even start shooting at it or anything, it ran toward them, and then it jumped on top of that school, and it ran away on the other side, and it got away from them. The only part I didn't get from that, was it a four-legged thing with the man's upper half? Or was it just like two legs in a man's upper half? I don't know. But I know the upper half of it was a man. And that's what they were, they were really scared of it at the time. So, this next one is about, uh, is about alcohol spirits. So my grandpa had just passed away. Um, my dad's dad, he had just passed away. And, you know, I was still mourning him and everything like that. And. I was at my dad's house with him, and we were both just sitting at the, the kitchen table. And I, you know, we had an 18 pack, and we were just sipping on that. We weren't getting crazy or nothing. We were just both kind of feeling bad yet. And uh, I reached into that 18 pack and I grabbed out one beer, and you know, because I, I could feel at the bottom that there was only three left. And I, I grabbed one out and I told my dad, I, I know there was two left in there. I said, hey, I'm just going to walk across to that those camps over there where, you know our powwow grounds i said i'm just gonna walk over to those camps dad over that arbor i'm just gonna sit where where grandpa sat one last time i'll sit there and then i'll let it all go but i just want to sit there be by myself so that's what i did went over there and i sat there and i was drinking that beer on the way over and i finished it while i was sitting there and took the can back with me i, I finally had my my fill and i let it down i let it all go so i come walking back and I got back to that house, I sat down, I threw that can away and I sat down and my dad was still sitting there waiting for me and I said, well, yeah, get another beer and I'm just going to go to sleep here pretty soon. And I said, all right. And so I went to that fridge and I, I opened that door and I reached into that container. And there was still three beers in there. I thought, you know, I must have just been imagining this. 
you know, there should only been two left in here. You know, so anyways, I, I grabbed one out and there was still two left. So I sit back down with, with my dad and, and I just wanted to hurry up and finish that and go lay down. So I did and I was thinking, well, I'll have one more. And I went back to that fridge and I opened it and I dug in that box and there was still three in there. <laughs> That's when I slammed that door and I said, dad, there's still three beers in there. He said, what? I said, there's still three in there. And I told him I took one when I left and there should have been two left. When I got back, I reached in there, there was still three. You know, I told him the whole story. He said, hey, wait, when you left, he says, I grabbed one out there and I stashed it in my dresser for the morning. There should have only been one in there. But anyways, that that's the story me and my dad called Ghost Beer. That beer just kept appearing that night. <laughs> that was a pretty, th those are those alcohol spirits. They can do things like that to raise hell with you. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it is. I don't know how they do that, but they can. And it's it's just, I don't know, it's wild how that happens, but it does. This next story is about um, a place called Seven Mile Lane. It's, it's a really spooky area. And it's just this dirt road that leads a little community off the res to like our res roads on the um, south side of our res. Well, anyways, uh, this girl... And her sister and her brother, they all wanted to go off the res to that little cowboy bar over there and dance and, you know, kind of party out there. Well, they did. And as they were walking back, uh, well, what ended up happening was that guy that drove him, the brother, he left them there. Because he said he seen them get in with some other people. So he left. But they said, no, we just went out to use the bathroom. We got back and you were gone. The bar was closing, so we had to walk. We had no way out, and so they start walking Seven Mile Lane. Now, if you're walking Seven Mile Lane at night, you're you're not in a good way, man. So you're you're just not in a good way, boy. That that's bad. And so as they're walking, this her sister starts getting her hair pulled, like just plum yanks her head backwards. And by then, they 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 start running. You know, they've had it. They're, they're too scared. They start running. This is seven miles now. And they start running on that dirt road. Her sister has uh, heels on. So she has to take, just kick them off and is running barefoot. They get to a certain point. But all, all this time, that one's getting her hair pulled and getting hit. Something's beating her up. So they get to a point where they're kind of tired. And they say, let me just have your, uh, let me have your shoes. You got socks on. I don't, I don't have anything. My feet are starting to bleed. And so they get all the way back to that house. Well, they're almost there. But this whole time, that one's all beat up. I mean, by the time they get to that house, she's bruised, scratched, hair missing. Like, really beat up on that road. And her dad seen them coming, and he, he jumped in his truck, and he went up to where they were at and drove them back just that little ways to the house, about 200 yards back to the house. And he asked her what happened, and they told him. They said, you guys ain't supposed to be out there. And you, why did you leave her? Why did you leave them? And that's when they figured out, well, I seen them get in with somebody else, which they didn't. So I'm pretty sure something tricked him and made those girls have to walk like that that night. And this is this next story is the same area, Seven Mile Lane. And this happened, to, um, one of my brother-in-laws told me this story. So this group of uh, guys were driving back um, on that road at night. And there was a, a woman walking. And, you know, we know, us natives know you're not supposed to be on that road by yourself at night. You know, so they stopped and said, hey, do you need a ride? She said, yeah. Yeah, I'll take a ride. Uh, just read up here. You don't have to go very far. It's a street up here. And so she jumped in with them and they said, do you want a cigarette, beer, anything? She said, yeah, I'll, I'll try a cigarette and a beer. And they were just visiting. And so they drive all the way up to get to this turn off. She says, yeah, right here, pull in. And they, they have to open that gate and they, they pull up in there and they stop. And she walks into that house and opens the door and lights are on in there she turns on some lights and then she comes back out on the porch said you guys want to come in and uh, they said well yeah i guess we can stay here for a little bit before we get going now this is way out in the country you know in the foothills of these mountains it's way out there and uh they say yeah we'll come in for a little bit and it's, that's all they remember is being invited in and then they all wake up the next day outside in that car all laid out in that car they all wake up at the same time and their beer's gone. And like, what the hell? Where's our beer? They, what happened last night? Like, I don't know. We were supposed to go in there with her. 
they couldn't figure it out so they get off like well wait let's at least get our beer then we'll head out and so they walk up to that door and there's this old old, old padlock on that door and that door looked like it had been locked for a long long time and they couldn't figure out they thought maybe she just locked it and left but they just really couldn't figure out what was going on and so they say all right well let's just get this car running we'll just head out to hell with it whatever happened i don't know we'll just head out they can't get that that car started they try they try finally they end up getting it started and they're pulling out and somebody open that gate and they go out to open that gate and christ that that gate too has been chained and has an old old weathered lock that has been on there forever so they don't know how in the heck they got through there or, or any of that happened but inside that house is an abandoned house. It's in a place called Sober Up Cooley. And it's all, it's abandoned. There's nobody that lives there ever. And people haven't been living there ever. You know, like way before this this group of people maybe. But no, the, the, they couldn't figure that out. They couldn't get their car out. So they just ended up cutting that, that wire. And they drove through like that. But yeah, that's another alcohol spirit kind of type story. And that seven mile lane has so many stories on it, like so many. I mean, one more I'll tell you that's kind of creepy about seven mile lane is um, uh, my wife's uncle. They were driving down that one evening. There's this really hard 90 degree turn when you're coming from the Hart Butte community and you're heading over to that other little town called uh, Depuya. And you have to take this really hard turn. Well, right on that corner, there's a fence post. And as they drove by it, they seen something sitting on that fence post. But they couldn't really see what it was. They thought maybe it was just a big giant eagle or something, you know, a, a golden one because it was kind of dark. But it was big. And so they drive by really slow. And then what they, <laughs> the only way he described it, he said was, uh, he says it was a bat man. It was, uh, it looked like a man sitting on that post, kind of like crouched down, but it had wings wrapped around him. And they just drove right by it. They weren't going to stop. They the hell with this. And they, they took a different road back. But yeah, that road is, is really scary. Seven Mile Lane. It's got a lot of stuff on it. So real quick, the uh, the Horseman story. This one's quick. And it's the first story I've ever heard about it. It's one of my friends who's a cop, BIA cop in Browning. So when he was younger, out in Hart Butte, he was kind of playing around. He'd, he'd play a lot by himself because he was an only child. And he was raised by his... Uh, I want to say his grandpa or something. So he's always playing around by himself. But um, he was in this field and he was looking over. He seen this horse. And all of a sudden it stood up. <laughs> like stood up and was looking at him. Like walking like a man too coming toward him. And he ran from it. It chased him all the way to his house. About 100 yards out of that field and into his house. And... Even when he got to his house, he looked back and it stopped, like, before it got into that housing area. And it walked off on its hind legs, just walked away, like like a man would walk. But it was a horse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that, that one's kind of an odd one, but it's the first and only story I've ever heard of a horse, man. Yeah. So this, yeah, this next story is, um, is about, a, about a Bigfoot. So here's this old man. Um, he used to warn these guys uh, and his family, don't go over that hill. It's out in a place called Star School. It's up in the mountains. He says, don't go over that hill. He says, that's where those, uh, those Imoyitipi are at. Don't go over there. He said, just leave them alone. That's their area. They live around those beaver dams in there. Just leave them. Don't don't ever bother them. You know, that's their area. Stay out of there. And uh, my wife's cousin knew this, but uh, his sister got married when she was in the Marines, got married to this, um, this, uh, I want to say it was a Hispanic guy. And he'd come up there with them and say, hey, well, let's, let's take him fishing. And say, yeah, let's take him fishing. And so well, where should we go? Well, right over here is closest. And it was those beaver dams. But, uh, my, my wife's cousin knew that, you know, they shouldn't be there, but they just wanted to take him fishing and show him the beautiful scenery of the res and everything. And so before they get there, he tells them all, he says, all right, this is, and he's speaking directly to him. He says, now, if anything weird happens, just run out of these beaver dams, okay? Just just run up to this truck because they have to park up on this hill and walk down to him. He says, run up to that truck, but you 
you stay out of this brush get to those little clearings and just just take those clearings all the way back up to that truck don't run through the through the brush and he said he thought that was weird you know because the way he looked at him but um so they're down there fishing and next thing you know uh they're getting ready to walk out there my wife's cousin and, and his brother they were getting ready to walk out of there and so he walks out and he's got this little dog with him like a beagle and he's he's getting ready to go back up to that truck so he walks around this big tree and he hears something you know a big old fell tree he hears something on the other side of it what the hell is that so he tries to walk back but whatever it was paced him back he could hear something walking in the brush and then back everywhere he'd go it would just stay on the other side of that tree of him so finally he walked out there and went up on this this little side of this hill but when he did <laughs> that tree he walked by to get up to it, it was a big tree and he started looking down there and jesus dog just started going nuts like he was getting beat up you know and he had to really calm it down put it in his um under his arm you know really hold it and kind of calm it down well his brother was following him too and he was just watching that trail where he come up at and he's seen one standing there by that tree that he passed he said it was big it was big like a 10 foot tall when it was big and so his brother come walking up through there but he was too scared to call out or say anything so he just watched his brother walk that same trail he took it led right by that thing and he watched his brother walk right by it brother got up there and sat down he was kind of winded and he says hey look look where you just came out at and he was looking down there because they had this uh i want to say a binoculars or just a regular scope without mounted they had something they were looking through he says look right by that tree where you come up at and so he was really looking and he says hey wait what is that is that where we walked he said yeah we walked right by. he said now look now look at that tree he looked at it and he seen it holy sh you know he start cussing holy sh what the hell is that he says that's one of them he said, you didn't say that you know i walked right by that damn thing you know and he said yeah let's just get back up to that truck come on uh this guy you know their their wife's be their brother-in-law he's gonna have to find his way up so they went back up to that truck but they seen it there anyways not much longer after they got to the top of that that uh to their truck that guy come running up he says you guys left me down there he said yeah we, we were walking back up we were just gonna circle around but we decided to come up here they didn't tell him anything i said yeah i was down there really fishing and something started throwing rocks at me so i thought it was you guys it's throwing rocks at me he says and it got quiet it got really quiet everywhere he said so i got scared and i remember you guys told me if, if something happens just take these clearings out and run up here and that's what he did well, that's, that's that story of them messing with uh messing with them when they were fishing up there so this this next story is kind of a sad one and and you can believe it if you want um i wouldn't i wouldn't blame you for not believing this one here was this bigfoot that kept messing around and i know this guy i know him and it kept messing around his house uh it just kept doing things around there you know raising hell breaking stuff just, just raising hell around there and so one day he he finally had it because um, he lives right by the mountains the mountains are basically his little backyard in the pine trees it's just right there and mountains right up above his house right there you can see the mountains and his thing kept messing around his house breaking things up fences you know just all kinds of things just raising hell around there and so he took his rifle one day and he waited and he waited and he seen one finally he seen one out back behind his house and put his rifle up and he shot and uh he downed one of them he 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 put one of them down and just then this big huge huge one come up so we think that was a female that he he shot and that big huge male picked that female up and it was screaming like sad it even had its head up to the sky and it was screaming and he's taking pictures of this too he had his camera because he was at his house and he shot it right standing on his porch shot it right there and he's taking pictures of this too that what was happening and then it wasn't long after that that um that thing it, it killed his favorite dog threw it on his porch even killed his horse and threw that damn horse on his porch too.
Yeah, but it's kind of a sad one. I don't know why he, he felt like he had to shoot it, but he did. And they never, of course, got any bodies or anything, but they did get some sort of evidence from it. And it was never heard from again. What kind of, you know, I want to say a blood sample or something. They, they never did hear from. Wherever they sent it to acted like they didn't have it anymore. I didn't know what they were talking about. So, yeah, I just had, it's kind of a sad one, I thought. And this next Bigfoot story comes from my brother-in-law. And he was out hunting one, one day. And kind of in that same area, but a little further south, about maybe five, six miles south. And there's Bigfoot sign all over that, that area. And there structures, like that kind of stuff. They're all over out there. The one I've seen, like, I can't explain how it made that that figure whatever the heck that was that it made in those trees it was like a sign that's the only way i can say it. it was like a sign but i have no idea how it weaved those trees to make it look like that it, it, it was amazing tell you the truth it was, it was really cool and it to me it looked like a huge arrow kind of thing is how it looked to me but how it did it was amazing it was blew my mind but anyways I walked through there and seen all these structures. They're, they're, they're everywhere, like like little things that looks like where they might have set down as a maybe a hunting blind or geez, I don't know, but structures everywhere in there. And so he's in this area hunting and he's got his scope and he's looking around. At this point there was nothing near him to take a shot at. So he was looking further. So he you know, he might be able to drive closer, get off and walk down and you know, that that kind of thing. So he's scoping out further up near those mountains and he sees this deer come running out just come running out really fast and then he sees this huge black thing come running out like a man it caught that deer it ran up to it caught that deer and just snapped its back like put its its head up to its hind legs like its hips and just snapped it from backwards broke its back threw it over its shoulder and carried it back into those trees he says, I'm sitting there watching that. He says, I can't believe I just seen that. He said, did, did that just happen? Did, you know, did that just happen? But he, that's what he's seen that day hunting. Really hard to get him to tell that story, but he'll tell it if you bug him enough. He said, now we're down to those doll stories. So this doll, it saved, uh, well, let's just start telling it. Um, my friend's dad was a Navy veteran and he was in World War II. And before he went, see, in his family, they had uh, they had medicine with these dolls. They could do these dolls could do things. It was their their medicine. And this one was given to him to protect him while he was serving by his family. It was the last thing they gave him before he shipped out. And they said, "Now keep this doll with you wherever you go. It'll protect you. It'll make sure you get back home safe to us." And at this time, he was so young. That he didn't really believe too much and stuff like that. He's like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it with me. He just did what they said. And so their ship finally ends up getting uh, hit. And it starts sinking. There was a lot of people that died in that. And he went down too. But there was a handful of them that survived. And, you know, he had that doll with him on that ship. So that doll sank too. And... They end up getting out there and this his other friend was on a different ship but he was a surgeon he says hey, wait wait i know this guy and his arm was totally mangled because they would come by and strafe him in the water trying to you know finish him off all the survivors finally the americans came and chased them out and was able to you know pick up a lot of people that were in the water and they did he was one of them and that surgeon recognized him he says i could help him he says, I'm going to try my damnedest to get that arm reattached. And he ended up saving his arm for him, but he was discharged after that. And when he got discharged, he got home and his family was waiting for him. And of course, they wait for you to fully heal up before they discharge you. So he was good. And they come home and uh, he left his some of his stuff over at his cousin's house before he went in. And they just kept it in this little, you know, footlocker. And uh, he said, I was waiting for you to come over because he showed up over at his, his house. He showed up over there and he had all his stuff. He said, I was waiting for you to show up. He says, you never did. So here, here's all the things that you left behind. I thought you should have them back. And when he opened that up, that doll was still in there. <laughs> yeah, It should have been at the bottom of the ocean, but that doll made it back to him. And that's the thing that he credits with saving his life while he was serving over there. And the last story I'll tell tonight is uh, that same family uh, there's these two brothers and they had an older sister and their mom 
And in this back room, she used to keep this little doll. It was a black Raggedy Ann doll, but it was handmade. You know, like how they used to make those kinds of dolls during the Depression? This one was handmade, and it was given to her by somebody. And, uh, well, she would tell her brother, she says, Don't you guys come in this room now when I'm gone. She says, uh, or that doll's going to chase you. <laughs> you know, she was just trying to scare him. And uh, one night, the younger brother got up to use the bathroom. And he come running back in his room, jumped in bed. And wouldn't go back out there. Well, he was chased that night by that doll. It actually chased him down that hallway. And then the older brother, same thing. Middle of the night, going to use the bathroom. And that doll chased him too. And this happened multiple times not just in the middle of the night when he was in the bathroom just to even when they're going back there to you know just go back by their room it would chase them from come out of her room and chase them down the hallway and they were young so one day when they were older the younger brother says hey do you remember when that doll used to chase us out of our sister's room he said what i thought i dreamt that or i thought i was just kind of like making that up in my mind you remember that too? He said, yeah, that was scary, man. I, I remember that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, those are my stories for tonight. Thanks for uh, listening to me, everybody. We really appreciate it. Everybody go check out Lodge Tales. Send him a follow and uh, check out all the cool stories he has. Lots and lots of cool stories. We really appreciate it. That, the doll ones. I love that. That's, uh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, really those cool. Are, those are scary, and I've always been fascinated by how things can get into inanimate objects like that. You know, because it's it's mm -hmm. true. Those spirits can mess with those. Uh, this my dad. Okay, so my cousin, um, he left his his dancing sticks. You know, like if you're a fancy dancer, you have these sticks. You swing them. There's usually like a string with a feather at the end. They use it when they're fancy dancing. Well, he left his sticks at my dad's because he changed and went those power grounds from his house but when he was coming back he forgot that bag and my dad and his girlfriend kept hearing something jiggling around i thought there was a mouse in there anyways they finally waited and they, they were watching that bag because that's where their room was where he changed and those sticks themselves were moving bouncing around in there themselves and that see things like that like my dad and them seen that they watched him kind of like jumping around in that bag and it's when he Hey, you better come get your sticks. I think they want to be with you. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah, I don't know how that happens. It's really weird, though. All right, well, I better log off. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for coming out. Yeah, thank you, man. See ya. You ever had a haunted object, Chris? <clears throat> Not personally, but that story he told about the doll is very reminiscent of the original Annabelle because she was a, a raggedy Ann doll as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? I think I had a haunted Camaro. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that movie, Christine? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We, we kind of always joked that this Camaro I had was haunted. Um, I think I've told this story a lot before. I'll tell it again real quick. It's, I'll just do like a short summarized version of it. Yeah. So I've always had Camaros my whole life. Like my first car was a 67 Camaro and I'm just like, I don't know. I just like Camaros for whatever reason. And um, it had been a few years since I had one. I found one for sale. It was like an 84. And uh, it was a pretty cool car. And I went to look at it. And it was an older guy who was selling it. And he was, you know, all gruff and huffy and not very friendly. And he's like, I just want rid of it. Me and my son, it was our project car. And my son died of cancer. And I just don't want to look at it no more. And I was like, oh, you know, I hate to hear that. I'm really sorry about that. And. It's like, yeah, you know, I think I'll take it. And he, so he overcharged the hell out of me, but I didn't care. I paid it because I wanted that damn car. And uh, that car hated me. It would die on me at random times. Um, I had it looked at by everybody. I had it worked on by everybody. 
But my boyfriend at the time, we could literally switch. He could come out of the passenger seat, get the driver's seat, and it would run like a brand new car. And the minute we would switch back and I would drive it, it would not go anywhere. And so we always kind of had this running joke that it was haunted and it hated me and it liked him because he was a car dude. And, uh... So I don't know. I don't know if it was haunted or not, but it, it sure was. It was a strange experience that I had with that car. Yeah, I just um, didn't like you. It didn't like me. It <laughs> did, however, like ACDC. So sometimes oh. I could get it to run if I put my ACDC CD in it. Hmm. Yeah. That's Who knows? Who knows? It was a crazy time for everybody. Uh, I think, let's see, this one has been waiting. What is the name? I missed the name. Hello. Hello. Oh, I think she might have fell asleep. Oh, I can't disconnect. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we almost got to hear a little tiny snore. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, um, okay. Hello. Honey. Let me get to Hi. where you got a sing. spooky story for us? Um uh, it's it's a spooky but it's beautiful at the same time. Let me get where okay. you can see me. Hold on. Can you see me? Ah, you can't see me. There we go. Howdy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So my story, just to make it short and quick, I have had a five-year-old son who just passed a cancer. There he is, my hero. But my son was nationwide, and he was in love with horror to the point where Robert Unglund, Kane Hodder, James Jude Courtney, Pinhead, they all came together for my son. And it was just very awesome i mean if you want to follow him follow him it is called Declan's defenders it'll show you his story but since he loved horror i kept his name going and here's what i do on a daily basis this is just some of my work i animate dolls i make very morbid weird things i mean my whole house is literally horror i redo caskets i mean I animate them and I put little people in them and make them like the crypt, like, what was it, the Crypt Keeper? Like, ha! Huh? Yeah. Look at this. I mean, like I said, my whole house is based on my son and everything here I have made myself created. That's really cool. Thanks. So, my, five, my five year old son had inspired me to do what I do. And what I'm trying to say is, I don't go to his gravesite because. He's always with me. He's here. I mean, you can feel you can feel the energy. It's so crazy. So then I created this room. High five. <laughs> this is what I do on my other daily basis. Oh wow. And my son inspired me to do this. To the point where the real characters come together and they're helping me like Freddy Krueger houses, my bark houses. I see things and I see different things and I create things, you know, and his memory. So it's, it's never ending. Here's what I'm working on right now, which is, here's my little station. <laughs> but I'm making this little guy. Don't ask me what. It's just wood. <laughs> But all my pictures have QR codes, and my son is here. You touch any picture, and he talks. I'm a, re I'm a grief counselor now, and it's the hardest thing in the world. But my son, everybody's like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Me too, but I'm not. Because I have a hero for a son. I do. And he <laughs> keeps me doing what I do. I, don't know, I just wanted to share my story, because... I don't know. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, I just, that's amazing. That's it. They're very morbid things, what I do. 
but people horror sell i mean i don't sell them i practically give them away but hmm. <sighs> just there's so much out there this universe uh, i don't know you guys are beautiful I don't know. thank you for letting me share my story but there is so much out there and keep on doing what you're doing mama yeah thank you for yeah thank you so much with us. <gasps> like crazy sorry <laughs> like that i'm new to this whole TikTok thing i have <clears throat> i have tourette so it's really hard for me sometimes to they breathe but i don't know that's they're very therapeutic on here for me i'm a i'm a counselor i'm a therapist and for me to seek therapy now myself is hard hmm. but it's taken off it is my son is creating hey my son is still making front page headlines i mean like <laughs> every street was shut down in west virginia and in my town for the parades that they would have for him because they knew that he wouldn't make it so it's just beautiful what people can do for one person and his soul is still here with me with us every day like just as just his bone marrow saved thousands it's amazing <laughs> yeah oh, that is good oh i'm gonna go. okay thank you for letting me share my story <laughs> yeah thank you so much for coming up Wow. Wow. Well, that, um, um <clears throat> go ahead, Sarah. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't know. Um, I was like, try, I was thinking like, oh gosh, how do I make the screen bigger? Um, <laughs> man, I dropped the ball. I, <laughs> I should have like, I should have put the, the bigger screen up. Um, yeah, I don't know. That that was intense. I, uh, you go ahead, Chris. Oh well, no. I mean, yeah, that that's really cool. All that stuff she makes. Um, yeah. Because you know, you know, I'm into horror and stuff like that. So I think it's great. And I was gonna ask her if she like sells it on Etsy or something, but she, you know, she says she, I don't know what she meant by it, practically gives it away. But she should uh, sell it, I think. But uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, that's what she said. What? What? Did Did I say something to set that up? I missed it. I don't. I don't know what that comment is in reference to. <laughs> um. Yeah, Tori. I don't know if it. I think her username was Tori. Is that what people are saying? Uh, if you're still in here, um, yeah, definitely, you know, maybe do like a Etsy store, like Chris said. And um, there's a lot of people out there that really appreciate the craftsmanship and, you know, um, be a good way to put those art pieces out into the world and so that they can live on forever. You will follow Tori, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it is almost two. I think we will go ahead and call it for the nod. I don't think that I don't think we have anybody else waiting. Yeah. So um, we I'll be back tomorrow night for the second horror story stream of the week. Chris, will you be with us? Uh, yeah, I should be here. OK. All right, guys. So we will be back here tomorrow night with more spooky stories at about 11 p.m. Eastern. So if you have a story that you want to share, come back and hop in the box and we will we'll see you then. Don't forget to check out Horror Chris, my lovely co-host. Um, he does lots of cool things, lots of creative things. So check him out. Send him some love. Send him some, you know, them things. Send him one of them things. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tully. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you all to my mods and stuff who are here. I appreciate you guys so much. And I want to get some sleep because I am so sleepy. But we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.